All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a karate time. Hi, I'm Sensei Joe Garvey from Joe's Dojo Villa Park. This is, uh, I don't know, it feels like week two of uh, having to do things from home. Uh, technically, this is not my home. It's just where my, th my son thinks I live. But uh, this is your online karate class for Tuesday. Um, goal on a Tuesday is to go over some kind of traditional stuff that either we don't do enough or we want to make sure you're good at. Um, my current thoughts are we start with the warm-ups. Hopefully somebody shows up and says this is what I exactly need. If not, we'll be going over some self-defense sets. We might be going over some katas. I'll probably pick a low rank, middle rank, high rank kata so that there's kind of a, a spread of the people that could review them. And all the high ranks should be working on the low rank stuff. All the low ranks can play along. Uh, one of the neat things about seeing harder, more exciting, dynamic katas at a younger rank is that, hey, I have something to look forward to. I, I can't say how many times when I was a young 13, 14 year old that I saw the purple belts doing Tai Chi Neko, which is the attacking cat kata with a lot of big angles and it's a very like short but very fierce kata that I'm like, oh, I can't wait until I'm better belt so I can have that kata in my repertoire. And it means we'll probably go over it today, but there's certain ones that fit personalities even. Like I, I remember some of my students like Joe's, I'm like, oh, just wait until you get to the tagging cat. You like cats, you like to attack, you now have pet, pet cats, you're in. You know, it has some good moves. But warming up, so arm circles. Whew. All right. Ichi, ni, san, chi, go, roku, shichi, hachi, q, ju, backward. Uh, another thing that I'm kind of excited about is I uh, finally pulled out my little bitty Surface Pro or Surface Mini, something like that. And I'm starting to get into working out in the AM uh, some programming things. I found that there's a lot of programming languages out there, but there's uh, something called Unity which is a popular one that they make games out of. Uh, my goal in the next, I don't know, less than a month would be to make a small quiz app. Because even my mother, as she's watching my videos, she she's like, hey, you know, I'm not really good at spelling these things that you keep saying in Japanese. Is there a way of getting some focused study on kind of the visual text of the thing? And we have cheat sheets and pieces of paper with words on them, but... A little quiz if I can make it somehow exciting or fun to get points and gamify some of the less than exciting parts of memorization that should bode well. Uh, the neat thing about me is that I went to school originally in college to become a programmer and at some point I switched to programming brains which is psychology and I've always kind of wanted to go back and since my son likes to sleep in late, it's a good opportunity for, well, both my sons sleep in late. It's a good opportunity for me to utilize the morning in a positive way of personal development. Ah, you guys always thought I was just going to do more karate in the morning. Like, no, I'm actually going to work out my brain because it's useful. Uh, might as well keep using your brain. That seems right. Ah, somebody said hi already. I wonder who that person is. Well, they must be saying hip circles. Good, good, good. Knee circles. Another thing I'll point out too, yesterday we went over a lot of kicks and my knees are feeling it. So I will be going over some review on those, but we're not going to be burning those out unlimited because I've got my knee brace at home and I want to make sure I can make it to tomorrow and the next day. Part of my old body is trying to say, hey man, hey, remember when you broke your knee once? Don't do that again. And that's okay. You got to be able to pay attention to your body when you feel soreness. Got to figure out how to work around it. Got to figure out how to do something similar or different if you need to. Nice and simple, back and forth, do it all the time. It's like this. If you do sign in and you say something, make sure you say hi. That way I kind of have a little bit of a, a checklist of saying like, oh, this person was hanging out with us. Even if you're not doing the karate and you're just kind of hanging out and watching karate, that's still okay. You're still getting part of your mind worked out. And hopefully on my positive light in this current world which one of my goals is to make sure that I give something to look forward to and something to use your positive energy on not anything super mythical or like it's more of the psychology base where 
You do something good, you feel good. You help somebody out, you feel good. You only think about the negative things, you start feeling negative. Very, very simple. <laughs> that be you become what you think about. The strangest secret. I should probably put that up in the dojo somewhere. You know, it's uh, Earl Nightingale used to talk about it, and there's been, what is it, Tony Robbins talks about it. It's a lot of the best motivational speakers. They're probably doing huge things right now. I have to find them. But you you got to put in some of the positive stuff into your life so you can keep going into the, the direction of not feeling bad and feeling low and down. Uh, there's one other fun video I found. I'll have to, I have, I'm going to throw it on the Facebook wall because I think it was super awesome. There's, uh, if anybody's watched The Office when they're, like, probably parents would be the people. The Office is like a fun-loving sketch, or not sketch, but a comedy show. And John Skazinski or something like that, he made a, uh, a new news report that has only positive things. And it's all things that are going on in the world that, there's obviously negatives, but how to look at the positives around so you can kind of get a little bit of a good in the world. Um, and I, I saw one episode of it and I was a little bit sappy and teary eyed because of the fact that it's like, holy smokes, that's what I need to see right now. I need to see the story about somebody that, you know, there's a newborn baby and the grandpa's sitting outside the window waving at the kid and there's still good things happening, but we have to do it in our safe rec recluse areas. Um, I'm also planning on doing a small craft where uh, there's the dollar store sells the pool noodles. If anybody's ever been in our dojo, they see the pool noodles behind me in the corners. Our kids like to decorate them. I've been known to uh, sling a mean duct tape. Uh, my goal would be to do that in between videos and then post it. Uh, if I can grab my my Biundo kids or something like that, I might have them do it with me so they could have some questions and answers at the same time. But it's one of those things where looking for something to do, well, here's something positive to do, and then you got to utilize or use them on each other and hit each other with pool noodles that look cool. You know, we have a couple that have been very well made that look like lightsabers, and we have a couple that are, I think I have a, a goat hoof in the back behind me, and I have the big long versions. Uh, it's a pretty reasonable craft, probably. One to three dollars, the biggest expense is the roll of duct tape. And if you have lots of different colored rolls of duct tape, that's amazingly large expenses, like me. That's what I got. So, moving forward, moving forward. Expect that in the next day or two. I hope to be posting a crafting something to do at home video. It just seems to be what I do. Is just keep making stuff. And time for crunches. So, Ichi, Ni. Yesterday I went over the different levels of sit-ups too, where you could do everything from just holding your body upright to going all the way up and down. If you want a harder version than this, you can also do up with your feet and with your hands at the same time. We call these V-ups, and they're pretty useful. They're one of the things I think is actually pretty equivalent to a good push-up. Because a lot of times I always thought that the sit-up portion of a workout was just kind of okay, and the push-up part would be the thing that really challenges. If you want this to be harder, you make sure that you don't let your feet touch, and you keep yourself in a straight position the whole time. If you want to make it easier, you bend your knees. This is a modified crunch. It's okay to do whatever you need. Uh, there's also some other fun ones where you go here, you have your feet up, and you go side to side. Sometimes we call these tick tocks, like it's a clock. Your goal is to have your legs straight still. You go through this version where you go up and then more up. This is not very traditional, is it? Oh well. Sometimes not traditional is a little bit more fun. Let me double check, say who's saying hi so far. So, so far, so far, so far. We got Donna, Jerry. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course we have a Bob. 
Bob's relatives in your dojo. I introduced Bob and Bill. Uh, Jerry, the funny thing is, we have a throwing bag that we call Jeremy or Jerry. My students named it and I thought about you immediately. So, the Alexanders are here. Good, good. So, Jerry Wright's here. I'll just bring over Jerry really quick. This is Bob's long lost cousin. Call him Jeremy. This guy, you know, very easy to knock over. It's also fun to hurl. He's got all the weight in the feet. So it's interesting because it's only 60 pounds, but when you actually start picking up and throwing it, it feels a lot heavier because you have to do negative levers up and down on it. He was helping me with my self-defense last week, so I have him around. Way easier than getting punched in the face by somebody. Uh, good. Bob, Jerry, got the whole crew here today. I might even have squeaks. You know, because Bob wanted to play along. You know, there you go. Hey guys, it's good times. All right, Bob, you take care of squeaks for us. Ah, oh, just disgraceful. Sorry, I was trying to avoid doing push-ups, but I guess I can't. Okay, let's have a little bit of fun with them then. So we're gonna go here, and I have a line here. I'm gonna push up, push up. Sound effects help. Yeah. That's similar to this. Or, let's see another one. <sighs> More is less, right? <sighs> let's see, that was about 10. That's no good. Nichi, ni, san, ni, go. Roku, shiti, hachi, kyu, ju. That's another 10. <sighs> Let's do something else for a second. Ichi. Ni. San. Shi. Go. Roku. Shichi. Hachi. Kyu. Ju. Ichi. Ni. Let's make this a little different too. Ichi. Ni. San. Shi. Go. Roku. Shichi, Hachi, Q, Ju, Ichi, Ni, San, Shi, Go, Roku, Shichi, Hachi, Q, Ju, Ichi, Ni, she go who do 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 Connie's never been my friend keep going keep going people are watching can't get away almost there ten more keep going I can't remember how many ten was oh good Ah, fix E, fix Obi. Good. Don't say if I got any funny back. Nope. Good. Small drink of water. Get your what's up? There. Don't want to get decapitated. There you go. Give myself some more room. Good. Now. Warming up, warming up, warming up. Let's do our self-defense is one through eight. That'll be good. Core rules of self-defense. Yeah, I can actually go up here now. Core rules of self-defense. What do you like to be? An arm's length and a half away. So, in our dojo, we have these squares, usually just about a square away. The reason why I say an arm's length and a half is because anything closer than that, a uh, hand is quicker than the eye and you can't really defend yourself. If you're further away from that, they start building up momentum and they crush you with their force, so you can't easily block or deflect. 
if you give them too much time to get to you. Um, next would be, we like to do a gaze, where gaze is kind of like Medusa's glare, where you just, you just open eye. In karate, we call it the wide eye stare. Not wild eye stare, like I used to think it was. It's wide eye stare. So I'm here. Now, even just opening up your eyes, you should be able to tell, even from far away on the camera, you're like, oh, that guy's paying attention. Now, I don't want to have my eyes looking like a crazy person. <laughs> Cause then they know I want to fight. I actually want to act and look like I'm a normal person. So I'm like, hey, no big deal. I don't know what's going on, but I don't want to do anything bad. I don't want you to do anything bad. I hope it's just, we can just talk this out. But inside our head, we should be going tick, 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 tick. As soon as they move, as soon as they move, as soon as they go, boom, and you explode. So uh, intensity is going from like zero to a hundred in like a fraction of a second. So you're like, hey man, it's okay. Well, bam, bam. It's not okay. I was waiting for you to make the move, so I'm not the bad guy here. If you move first and they weren't actually going to hit you, you might be the bad guy in that situation. So you have to make sure they are the aggressor so that you don't get in trouble. Now, side note would be, if they have a weapon, they already made the first move. That's just a side note. That means you run away, hopefully, but if you had a fight, they had a knife, that's their intent. If they were hands up and they're a little angry, their intent is to yell at you. So if you punch them in the face as they're getting ready to yell at you, that's considered uh, bad. You become a bad guy in that situation. So, got to pay attention to those little cues. Um, arms length and a half, gaze. Centrally locate your eyes. So you're looking towards the middle section. So Bob's got a good little V here. This is where we usually look. Right here. If you look them in the eyes, there's tricks to that. Some people say you look a bad guy in the eye. Those people usually get punched. Because when you're staring down an enemy, you're <sighs> looking them in the eye. If they're looking you in the eye. They know it's a fight. They start to fight because they want to make sure they win. So they hit you first. And if you're gazing into their eyes, they might even be triggered. They go, oh, bam. They look off to the center like we do on EPUN number 10 where you look at your hand and you punch them. That's the only one in our whole karate system that actually attacks first. It's just, hey, by the way, bam. Sneak attack. Good. So, gaze, look, distance. Let's see, what other ones? Intensity, level 10. Actually, in a scale of like white belt to black belt intensity, or like on the, in like the danger scale, like green to red, or black, you know, active war zone is black. You have to be really, really aware. And awareness is probably like the second most important thing. So if you don't know something's gonna happen, you can't do anything about it because you didn't look. So if you see somebody across the street and they look like they're a crazy person, you should pay attention. They could be across the street, so you might not have to hide in your house, but you might be like, huh, it's active defense time. I have to make sure I'm away from that person. And you might not ever have to see them again, but distance is your friend at that point. So far away that you could get away without them catching you is good. So awareness though, that's seeing the situation before it happens. Females have this natural ESP thing. They're luckier than us guys because it actually works and they are smart enough to listen to it. The key is they have to listen to it. We, I talk in a lot of self-defense situations and a lot of times it's the females that show the fear. The problem is they don't accept the fear. That fear is real and they go with it. You gotta go with it. And that's a good idea. All right, good, good. So. Fear is an absolute important thing. It motivates you to go faster and harder and quicker and crazier. Because if you think something bad is going to happen, you have to react that much harder, that much faster. A lot of people are like, false evidence appearing real. Maybe it's real apparent, real evidence, and you better pay attention to it. So, eat the fear. Like, ah! Has to motivate me. Have to go Hulk on because of that. Okay. Back to the basics. Hands up. Ball, ball your feet a little bit. So you pick up your heels on me. I don't know, I have to go backwards for that. So if I'm here, you ball your feet, that means you, have, you can actually move either direction. If you're whoosh, locked into the ground, like say I was here in this really awesome karate stance. Now I'm stuck here to be able to get out of it. I have to get up. So in a self-defense situation, you usually want to be really, really light and easy. Like, hey man, it's no big deal. <clears throat> And you start going with your motions. Most important one, I think the first is level zero. You're just slap. 
or slap. Now, if they're punching here or here, I want to be here or here is the easiest two ways. I can even go forward and smash my hand, my head into their hand, and I can break their wrist, but that's hard. Moving backwards gets you into that long distance attack where they have momentum all of a sudden for the second and third punch. So if you don't utilize your step back as a way of attacking them, you're wasting it. But sidestep is easiest. I call it number zero because it's a slap. Now their hand was here. You move that far. Now their hand is here. And that'll actually even add to your punch if you do it right. So as they're attacking you, you let them. They can even push your shoulder. I think Sensei Farouk and I went over this once where they push, I push, and that adds to my damage. So it's almost like they're chambering my arm for free if they accidentally hit me there. My goal is to not get hit, but you know, you don't always have to get all your best things happening. Sometimes you mess up a little bit and you keep going. So sidestep, bam, oh, second hand goes. Sidestep, bam, hand up. So, shote, tate, fine. One, two, great. One, two, three. Oh my goodness, this is so easy. You just go block, hand, hand, hand. You notice I was, I was twitching my hand a little bit different each hit. It doesn't really matter as long as you keep applying force until it works. The key is don't be here. Ugh. Then you're trying to punch them off after they already kind of knocked you back and took away a lot, a lot of your energy. So, level zero is block. Bam, 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 bam. I say four punches to the head because four is better than three. So, round block or trap. One, two, three, four. Easy, easy. All right, now the traditional from the Ken Newton era. Number one, sidestep. You did that same first starting point. Now your second hand comes on the outside of your elbow and chops down and out. So I go, shote, shuto, also known as a round block. This would get it so it would be hitting me in the arm. This will get it so now it's on the flat part of the outside of my arm. And I have this hand and a knife hand edge. So if I hit them with it, it stings. It stings them right here in the forearm. So one, and now I have this opportunity. I could either push them out, which is then making it my harder to get my second punch, or I go here and I could clinch them in. That's my preferred methodology. So if I go, they punch me, I go, nope, gotcha. Bam! If you notice, I have them chambered here. I pull them in, boom! Even if they're bigger and taller than me, or smaller than me, I pull them in. Now, since my body is twisted over to this angle, I pull back on the next move, and I finally let them go. I don't need them anymore. And I do a half step back into the tate. So, if I go round block, I go chambered seiken, chamber, chamber my other hand tate, twist my whole body, turn back tate. So, coco tate, I said the wrong word, don't worry about it. Mess up, keep going, that's what we do best in this world. So. Mwashiyuki, Seikenzuki, Kokozuki, Tatezuki. Back to ready stance. So I'm nice and happy again. Ah! Oh, sorry, I went faster. So you go round block, punch, bridge hand punch, vertical punch. Boom. Number two. We just had this whole speech about not walking backward, right? Now we're going to walk backward anyways. So... They're going to be punching. It's not like I'm, no, I'm walking away. It's more of a, you just dedicated your energy to getting stuck. So you, Marote Osayuki, they're punching in. You grab down in their arm. You slide down their hand. And you kind of got them. And they're at their maximum reach. Of, uh, you're pulling them off balance. You go double down. Bam. I have them. I'm not letting them go yet. So I, one and, there's an eye gouge. Keep your blinking going. Kick to the groin. Is that enough? So you go, one, two, three, four. Whoa, that's a lot of right-sided moves. So you go, or left side if you're looking on the camera. So you go, down, up, down, up. Simple is usually best. Now here's the benefit of this elbow. I'm going here, then I'm going, I'm lifting this foot straight up, and now I'm pouncing up angle. I'm hitting them right here underneath their jaw, clenching their tooth for them. I'm driving up angle as my body goes forward. So I'm going one and two. And I still had them. I didn't let them go. 
one and two and that's it. I just keep them. So I stay really close to me. So again, fast and crazy. Ah! Ooh. Yeah, fine. Other side. One and two and. Well, that works. Boom, bam. Who's <clears throat> Good. Number three. They're punching. I'm going, bam. This is up. We always talk about these different directions to go. This is one of the only ones which goes straight line up. Now the goal is, as they're punching you in the face, you're misdirecting their hand up. Your goal is to catch their hand mid-punch. So you go, bam! Now, if you catch it only a little bit, they gave, go right in your forehead, which is like punching a bowling ball. Stinks to be them. Even if they punch you in the chest, bam! You jam it up, bam! That's your first instance of a jam in our dojo. Cause you're jamming their arm up and forward. So you go, bam! Now you pull down, which is the hardest move in a long time. So you go here, that is ridiculously tricky. I'm gonna try to zoom in for you. So I go here, this side, this side. So if I'm going left, my left hand's in the front, my right hand's in the back. I turn, I grab on, and I torque down. If I go righty, I go here. See, I'm actually saying it backwards, so it makes it look easier. So I go here. I think about this as like a sword draw. You're chopping, but it happens to be that you have to catch them first. So this is my end goal, but I have to turn a quarter turn to be able to get there. So I go here, grab, kick face, back fist. So from further away, kick, pull, kick, snap. Hey, that's like our favorite back fist in sparring. It just goes down to the head instead of to the head. Hmm, because I bend them over. That makes sense. So kick, whoosh, boom, kick, bam. Now, I don't know if you noticed, it looks like I'm doing lefty first, righty first, second. I'm actually doing it righty lefty for me because it's easier that way. I'm right hand dominant, so I think about these all with one side focus. Then what I do to teach myself left side dominant is I do it righty, lefty. Righty, 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 lefty until I get the lefty again. So again, if I'm here, oh, that part's easy then. That part's hard for me because I step a little off angle. So you gotta focus, okay. Hand on the inside is the one that's doing all the moves. I forgot to kick him in the face. It's okay, kick face. You go, bam, bam, boom. Good, number four. Keeping the direction going. So, this one, there's a, when you're in fighting stance, we call this the inside of the body, this the outside of the body. In self-defense, it's no different. So if I have a person facing here, and I move to the outside of them, or I move to the inside of them, that's my goal. We got two more bonus comments. Let's see if anything cool happened. Let's go ahead. Hey, sent by Chris. I've been replaced with Bob, that's right. I'll show you. Bob and Jerry, I got both of them up here. I got my 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 entourage. But don't forget, you know, the call bag is sneaking up on Jerry right now. Because it's way easier to talk to an audience. So I just have an audience of my peers, which happen to be, you know, people that feel no pain. Okay, so number four. We're stepping off, similar to number one, but number one, we're going to the outside of the body, number four, we're going to the inside of the body. Doesn't make a difference from where you're looking. No, there's nobody in front of me. But you step out, you know, keep it at you, push away. Same exact block as number one. So shote shuto or moashiyuki. Then grab again. This goes nishiken, hanurikin, kamaruchi. Now, a lot of time in the olden days, so if I get like a Wyatt or a, a green in here, they'd be like, yeah, you tear it off. Nay, nay, we changed that theory. We went for, instead of going here, eyes are great, throat is great. The ear, we're trying to actually pop the eardrum and make it so they can no longer walk. Mind you, they can no longer see already and they have a hard time breathing. So not being able to walk means that you didn't kill them, you walked away and they're very severely wounded so they must have been really bad guys. So you go here, ground block, Nishikin, Hanarikin, Kamaduchi. Now, another thing that we do different on Nishikin too is we go here, ground block, we want to do Nishikin Uchi. 
because you don't want to leave your fingers in their eyes. If you leave your fingers in the eyes, they twist their hands, they break all your fingers, it doesn't work as well. So you go, Ksh, bam. An Arakan is usually an Uchi too, but this one we leave as a big old th thrust punch and bam. Good. So number four has had some drastic cosmetic surgery for theory crafting. So round lock the other side. Here you go. Eyes. See, I'm grabbing onto them here. Throat. Ear. Go. Ah, ah, ah. If I'm doing it like a Taizu, I go. Ah. Cool. They fell apart. You go. Round block. Eyes. Throat. Ear. Great. Number five. Stay alive. Good. Number five. This one is the another crazy one because as opposed to just stepping off to the side and punching them, we're bouncing or striding off to the side. So I'm going here. I'm doing this little block. It's sneaky kagiuki or hook block. You go, hey, how you doing? How you doing, eh, Joey? Yeah. So you go here, hook, plus kick to the groin. What? So they here, body here, me here, flick a kick. So really sneaky, flicky, kicky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you go, one, shh, bam. I like this one because it's got a high five to the side of the head. Show tay to the ear tay. So you go here, shh, one, two. Now this hand still had him pinned for a second. Is gonna go turn, oyayubi. So thumb punch right here or right here, depends on how tall they are versus you. Then turn back, crunch! You're grabbing that arm that was kind of floating out here as you thumb punched here. It's still right around here. So you just scoop and tear. And you do forearm right through their elbow joint. And they no longer get to wave to people anymore. They just get to lift up their arm. And I shouldn't have hit that guy. Good, so number five again. Step, plus block. Plus kick. One, two, three. Good. Good. This way. One, two, three, four. I don't know. My numbers sometimes change. So, hooking block, kick. Oh my goodness, I went too far. Shante, all you be break. Okay, okay. Number five is pretty cool. What about number six? Well, Number six, I think, is number four's best friend because they get to know about the same people. They just do it different ways. So number six is another one to the inside angle. So they're punching here. You're going washiuki, grabbing. Now we're going to go ear, throat, groin. So that's a make them dance, make them sing. You go, bam, bam. Go ear, throat, bam, groin. Cupped hand up, boom. Same pop with the with the hand of the ear. If you're here, you go boom. You're not going arm slap. You're going twist, pop. So your body's supposed to go turn over and just ah. Make them want to sing, except for they they fall over because their inner ear balance is gone. So Muashiuki, Shote, Hanarkin, Kamaduchi, another one too. You collapse the tailbone right in. You don't have to tear, you just crunch and make sure they dance for the rest of their lives. Okay, this direction. Mwashiyuki, Shotayuki, Anurkinzuki, Kamadauchi, hands up. Sorry, I had to destroy you because you did something evil. You tried to attack me and I thought you were a threat to my life. Remember, that's the technical difference between a, 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 a black belt that thinks they're better than themselves and somebody like me who was like, hey, if I had to use my karate, because I'm afraid for my life. It's not because I'm trying to show off. That's one of those things that we we have our respect for ourselves. I hope I never have to use this. I hope I never have to use this. It might have to be used in the near future. So I better practice like I need it. So if I'm going, I want to turn my whole body between everything, every single thing I do. I want to generate as much energy and as, and as much power as I can. Number seven. One of the most famous ones. We call it the pizza guy. They punch, we go, boom! We forearm block. So if I forearm block, shoo, they're coming on this like Toro, straight line. They're coming in forward, I'm feeding them a back fist. So I go, forearm block, back fist. I don't hang out with it a long time. Back fist, one. Back fist, back fist, back fist, just one. So I go, forearm block, back fist. 
Then I move their hand out of the way as I feed them a slice of pizza. Nice shote or suriuto. We're doing an extra up angle punch. That's a knockout strike. So we go forearm block, back fist, punch, kick. Now here's the pizza guy. So you open up the pizza oven, preheat the oven, slide the pizza in, slam the door shut. Again, open up the oven, preheat it, slide the pizza in, slam the door shut. Pretty good. Number eight, don't want to be late. That's why I was supposed to work at Partillo's. So, hey, number nine, doing just fine. Well, we're on number eight. Number eight, I think this one's the most ballistic hard one because so far we've gone side, back, up. Then we went the other side and then we went dancing now off to the side. Then we went back to the same side again. And then we went diagonal back. Now number eight is actually forward. Oh, number eight's super hard because you have to get intense in their face. They start punching. They're like, nope. Knee, elbow, tate. So back up a little bit, set say me. Good. So they go, grab onto their shoulders, rear leg, front elbow, rear reverse punch. So I go, hey Bob, bam, bam, bam. That's it. You just jam, you grab and crunch. So I hate your hip, you grab on. You crunch them in as you pull your knee into their midsection, usually. The groin is actually pulls you away, the midsection pulls you close. So you just fall into that elbow damage. All right, halfway there. It's time to switch to kata mode. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Sorry, Bob, you're gonna have to back up a little bit. It's my working room here. Sorry, tall bag. Arr, that's the wrong angle. Sometimes senseis mess up. Remember that, we're humans. Okay, so, side note too. You guys gotta start making up a new name for that tall bag, so I haven't made up one yet. All right, I said easy, medium, hard. So, starting with easy, 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 easy. Let's go Taiko Kosan. I'm pretty sure I've done most of the other ones already. So Taiko Kosan, that means exercise form number three. It is ah, Shuri Goju Origins. So, without further ado, Taikyoku san! Kata. Hus! That's double O block if you don't know. Spot left, middle, right, left. Pull in, high block. Punch. Yeah, right to the jaw. Spot. Turn, high block, punch, spot, high block, one, two, ha! Step and block, punch, turn around, block, punch, turn back to the way you're going, high block, one, two, ha! Spot, high block, punch, spot. High block, punch, spot, pata! Sorry, three deep breaths is what you usually do when you're finished with the kata or when you start the next kata. Middle kata, let's see. Uh, gakise, that sounds pretty good. A lot of us are working on gakise these days. Huh, what should we do once? Hmm, hmm. Nobody said anything. Got to say it is. Got to say. Hus. Spot. 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 High block. Punch. Punch of the groin. Spot. High block. Punch. Punch to the groin. Spot middle. New person. Middle block. Middle block. Kick. Up. Down. Low block reverse punch. Since Steve just fixed me last week. It's a low block there. So boom. Bam. Bam. Boom. 
spot, crane up. Ha! Step forward, Chudanuki. May Gary. Aji Elpo. Giran Riken. Giranuki. Giakazuki. Crane up. Ha! Shoot over the throat. Pull back. Spot diagonal right. Yamazuki. Pull back. Diagonal left. Yamazuki. Shoot over. Ha! Hush! Oh, yeah. Let me double check who's on the live right now. See who's who's hanging out with me. Aha, uh -huh, Sensei Dave is in the background there. Good. Right now, showing just a couple humans. A couple inhumans. We don't want those guys in. Next, we got Tai Chi Neko. As I said, we're going to do it. We're going to do the attacking cat kata. That's Tai Chi Neko. You're going to take your right foot, step back, and a new kibirachi. Low block, high block with your tiger claws. Step forward, shudo. Damn, like you're serving the slice of pizza again. Shudo here. Cross step forward, bring your elbow back, elbow, back fist. So it's body weight, flick. Step back, middle block, low block. It's kind of like an open hand hasamuki or scissor block. Also known as a koko osi in my world. Step forward and center off your kiba. Back to the beginning. Elbow. That's a ah! spot left. Right foot shift in, shift diagonal. Geranuki. Turn into your zenkusa. Gyakuzuki. I like. Geranuki. Now you're going to do kakuto. So chicken head block. Torakin. Hook block. Heavy. Side kick. Okay. That's it. Just gotta do that twice. What? I messed up? Probably. Good. So, tight your neck. Step. Now, you don't do much. You're here. Here. Spot. Torah. Step forward, shuto, cross step, elbow back. This is the same thing as before. Step back one, on high low, high low, hello. Step diagonal, ha! spot, gaita, kakuto, torakin, kagi. Well, now high shoe kagi, good. Heavy, side kick, shudos, jump spin, shudos, shudos some more. Ha! One, two, three. Good. There's our Tai Chi Neko. Get your kitty cats on. Now, let's make it a little more fun. Let's go grab onto some Weep Ons. Pretty good tomorrow. So, commas. Are you comma serious? I am. If you don't have these, have your shoe those out. It's fine. So you got these guys. You go here. Tai Chi Neko, no kama. We're gonna go ahead and do the regular card, I guess. So here. Sideways. Uh, let's just go there. Oh my goodness! Me. Sometimes you mess up. So restart. So we shift low block. Raise up, hook around, stab. That's where I messed up. Side kick, rotate shootos, spot, 
Cora, Sat, Shudo, one, two, three, ah! high block, around, around, through, Cool. Comma, 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 chameleon. There's a cat. It is a cat. Yum, yum. Aha. One more bonus. One more bonus on that bonus. Aha. I know, tomorrow's weapon day, but when you do a cat kata and you have claws, it looks like a cat kata. She's got claws. So, if you don't have claws yet, now you got your craft project. I think I'm pretty sure I've seen somebody make this out of a PVC pipe and some uh, some duct tape. These are my first takeos I ever made. You can see, homemade, because I fit them to be exactly me. Claw, claw, chain mail, leather, I don't know. I didn't know what I was doing back then. I just made it work. These takeos are probably like 12 years old now. So, Tai Chi Neko, no takeo. And don't stab yourself, it doesn't feel great. So here, position Sorry to put these away in the middle of your bowing so you don't you just keep going even though I don't know what you're doing just keep moving right Bob leave those out for tomorrow I'm sure we'll use them all right let me double check if anybody's got any other question marks I go over for you on your traditional day. Let's go ahead. Got to watch some Sensei Dan. I know. Oh, Dave, that's even better. Good. Good. Well, I haven't gotten your videos, so I don't know how to post them yet, Sensei. But we're going to do it. They're going to be here tomorrow showing some Taizu, so we'll, we'll figure it out. <sighs> Relax. Something I haven't said in a while. If you finish your workout, it's useful to go back and do some extra bonus stretches. So if you worked on some joints and some weird spots and some weird ways and some hard work and some good energy, you can use that to give yourself a little more warm up, cool down. Your warm up can be done as a cool down. What? Yes, it's for real. So you're going in and you kind of tone it back down so you actually go into tomorrow with less injuries than you had the day before. If you take yourself seriously and work out and then warm up and then cool down. Warm up's important. Cool down's important. Do them both. They cost the same amount. Waha, well, because you're already there. Waha, well, super easy. Cool down. Work your body the way you just worked it. Get a little bonus in. Get your knees bending. Rock it backward. You didn't have to do the push-up sit-ups and stuff. You already did those. That's the workout. Uh, reminder, every single class, I hope you get stronger, smarter. Well, smarter, I actually want two days. So I want you to learn something new and get better at something you already knew and get stronger. If you didn't, you're missing out. You're missing out at some point. Even if you're like as high a rank as karate as I am or bigger than me, I could watch somebody that's a lower or higher rank belt and I don't necessarily watch what they do, I watch how they teach it. So me teaching Taiki, Yoku, whatever, might be the same kind of the 700 other people have shown, but there's something I probably do differently that's worth noting. And it might be something that you choose not to do. I mean, when you own your own dojo someday, or you have aspirations of teaching your kids, or aspirations of helping out in the dojo, you don't have to be me. Goodness, I hope you're not me. I hope you're me plus better than me. So that eventually, you could teach what I taught, the way you liked it, even better. That makes sense, right? So, just because, and actually no, I'll, I'll back down on it, or I'll back up and say that again. I 
personally, I had a hard time in school because I was kind of smart, but I didn't figure out that homework is important. It took me until college before I figured out how to do homework on time. But what I'll say is, I didn't have the teachers that I think I wanted. I know, you don't get to pick your teachers. But if I had a teacher that taught me why instead of what, so why do we practice? Because it makes it easy. Makes so when you need it, it's there. So when something stressful happens, you go right to your basics. Math's the same thing as science, the same thing as karate. You go to your basics when you're getting stressed out. That being said, if I had a teacher that figured that out, I might be even better than I am. That being said, I made it a point when I started substitute teaching and, and schools and teaching karate to pick my favorite teachers of my whole lifespan and emulate their stuff. So you could easily see my Sensei Dan and Sensei Steve's influence. What you can't see is Mr. White's influence from Willowbrook, Mr. Olson's influence from Willowbrook, uh, my, my cheerleading coach, my gymnastics coach, you know, Mr. Isaacson from Willowbrook, uh, what is it? Ah, uh -huh. now I'm, uh, Alan, you know, uh, Alvin, ah, Al, Coach Al, that's what we call him, in cheerleading. He worked us to the tail, he worked us to the bone, and I learned that. That's why when I'm in class, I'm usually this sweat guy, because I have a hard time not putting forth a lot of energy because of karate, gymnastics, and cheerleading. Those three things put together made it so I knew how to outwork most people, especially physically, sometimes mentally. Usually mentally, but sometimes not. If I can't beat you with my brain, I'm going to figure out a way to beat you with my body because I'll figure it out. I'll just be here and woo! Ksh, you're off. If I can, I will. If I can't, I might. Whatever. All right, enough speeching. So hopefully you had a good workout. Hopefully you had a good time. I uh, hope you share this. I, I post everything on YouTube by some time o'clock a little bit later from now. So that everything I've done, you can find. On purpose. This is my like living will to give out my karate to everybody. It's kind of like what Bruce Lee did, except for I got an easier phone, so I don't have to like make movies just do it. I just give it to you for free right now, right here. All right, enough words. Kyotsuke, ready. Thank you, everybody.